the enigmatic Black Knight satellite, a peculiar object that has allegedly been orbiting Earth for thousands of years, has sparked great speculation, debate, and fascination among conspiracy theorists and astronomers alike for well over a century since it was first detected. Is it a classified United States military project? A derelict Cold War era Russian spy satellite lost in the vastness of space? or an extraterrestrial probe monitoring Earth? When Russian cosmonaut Sergei Krikalev, who was a part of the six-member crew of the NASA STS-88 Endeavour mission, looked out of the shuttle window to take photographs of an unknown object following NASA's protocol for UFO sightings, little could he have imagined the incredible excitement and controversy his actions would cause back on Earth. Although Krikalev was not the first to capture the strange-looking object on camera, his effort arguably produced the clearest pictures of the purported Black Knight satellite in a hundred years. Intriguingly, those sensational photographs were published by NASA on their official website. Ufologists relished the opportunity to scrutinize the pictures, declaring they proved the Black Knight satellite was no figment of imagination, and that as they had contended all along, it was an object of alien origin, sent to surveil Earth from afar for unknown purposes. The Dark Satellite, or Black Knight Satellite, grabbed the attention of scientists in the early days of space exploration during the 1950s, when puzzling signals were detected in near-polar orbit of the Earth. It was a time of heightened tensions between the United States of America and the Soviet Union. Inexplicable occurrences, whose sequence appears to have been orchestrated by some unseen hand, happened on the back of a series of events involving the United States. These unprecedented episodes broadly include the Battle of Los Angeles during the Second World War in February 1942, the detonation of the first atomic bomb in White Sands Proving Ground, New Mexico, in July 1945 the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in August of the same year, sightings of odd aerial objects by pilot Kenneth Arnold in Washington State in June 1947, which were termed flying saucers in the press, the alleged crash of an extraterrestrial disk, and the subsequent retrieval of alien bodies in Roswell, New Mexico in July 1947, and finally, UFO sightings over Washington, D.C. on two consecutive Saturday nights in July 1952 that caused widespread fear. A noteworthy addition to this list is the considerable panic that ensued during an October 1938 Halloween radio broadcast. Directed and chillingly narrated by Orson Welles, a radio drama of The War of the Worlds, the classic sci-fi novel penned by H.G. Wells, left terrified listeners thinking a Martian invasion was underway. All these events were still fresh in people's minds, and sightings of UFOs or unidentified flying objects became a regular feature, what with the paranoid citizenry having their eyes glued to the skies. The 1950s were also an era when the possibility of life on other planets and alien visitations began to enter public consciousness more than it ever had over the past half a century. Newspaper reports and magazine articles, science fiction novels and Hollywood movies, and of course, ufology societies kept everyone informed and on the edge of their seats. On May 14, 1954, bang in the middle of the Cold War, the Aviation Week and Space Technology magazine reported that the United States Air Force had detected at least one and possibly two artificial satellites circling the Earth, and that they were being kept under close observation. In the normal course, such news would have constituted run-of-the-mill reportage, hardly raising eyebrows among the public though it would doubtless have caused alarm in the Defense Department and echelons of political power if these objects were assumed to be spy satellites. 
But the Aviation Week article sent chills down everyone's spines, because at the time it was published, humans had still not achieved the capability to launch satellites in orbit. The shocking information about the mysterious satellites was revealed by Donald Edward Kehoe, a Marine Corps major-turned-UFO researcher and founder of the National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomena, or NICAP, who claimed government scientists working at White Sands, New Mexico, had made the discovery. The Air Force issued a vehement denial to Kehoe's statement, maintaining they were not watching any satellites, artificial or otherwise. Skeptics, on the other hand, accused Kehoe of making outlandish statements to promote his latest book on UFOs. Yet, behind the scenes, the Pentagon swiftly swung into action, even as a stunned U.S. citizenry grappled with the implications of the news. Upon tracking two satellites emitting radio signals as they circled at 400 miles and 600 miles above our planet, Pentagon officials immediately suspected the Soviet Union. The Russians were not just blamed of espionage, but were presumed to have beaten the United States in the space race. The Russians categorically denied these charges and in turn held the Americans responsible for the satellites. If neither the U.S. nor Russia had secretly sent a satellite into space, whom did it belong to? Aliens claim UFO hunters, convinced that it was the Black Knight satellite. The Air Force sought the help of Dr. Lincoln La Paz, the then head of the Extraterrestrial Bodies Institute at the University of New Mexico, to determine the nature of the anomalous objects. Dr. La Paz was no ordinary scientist. He possessed vast experience in conducting UFO investigations for the U.S. Air Force, particularly the Roswell Non-Terrestrial Vehicle Crash Incident of 1947. La Paz teamed up with astronomer Clyde Tombaugh, the discoverer of Pluto in 1930, to confirm that the near-Earth orbiting objects were natural, meaning they were no more than meteors. However, another version of events states that it was La Paz and Tombaugh who had originally detected the two objects in the murky darkness of space while working on behalf of the Air Force, hinting they could be artificially built satellites and that the duo later stoutly denied ever having made such an erroneous identification or even working together at White Sands Missile Range. Since the Aviation Week article received tremendous traction amongst the press and public, the Pentagon rushed to allay growing fears about the unusual outer space objects. The scare over the observance of two previously unobserved satellites orbiting the Earth has dissipated with the identification of the objects as natural, not artificial satellites. Ufologists, though, assert this was the convenient conventional explanation, one meant to distract and steer the public away from the truth. They point to the fact that the Soviet Union launched the beach ball-sized Sputnik 1, humankind's first ever artificial satellite, into space from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan only in October 1957, a full three years after the detection of the so-called Black Knight satellite. But ufologists could hardly have imagined that there was much more to come in this extraordinary saga. On February 11, 1960, a New York Times article reported that U.S. tracking stations had detected a mysterious dark and silent satellite wheeling overhead on a regular and roughly pole-to-pole -pole or polar orbit. Such an orbit would endow the object with the exceptional capability to observe every part of the Earth's surface. The Navy had employed the latest component of the Space Watch program called Dark Fence, designed by the Naval Research Laboratory to find and track this satellite. It was a kind of radar tripwire that stretched across the width of the United States to help keep track of satellites whose radios had gone silent. When the object showed up during two passes of the dark fence, the news was communicated to President Eisenhower and marked top secret. However, though initially classified as a Soviet spy satellite, it was later revealed that the object constituted the remains of an Air Force Discoverer 5 satellite, one of the first photographic reconnaissance satellites built by the United States. You would be mistaken if you thought only UFO hunters believed that the strange objects detected in outer space were otherworldly. 
In 1960, Ronald Bracewell, Professor of Electrical Engineering of the Space, Telecommunications, and Radio Science Laboratory at Stanford University, published an article in the authoritative scientific journal, Nature, in which he advanced the possibility of the presence of an alien probe that was trying to establish contact with Earth. As proof of his theory, the scientist cited the phenomenon of delays in radio signals observed since the beginning of the 20th century. In 1961, French author, ufologist, and astronomer Jacques Vallée divulged that while working on the staff of the French Space Committee, he had taken photos and filmed a bright oil tanker-sized satellite. While tracking its trajectory, Vallée realized it was in a retrograde orbit, meaning in an east-to-west orbit, opposite to Earth's rotation. However, when he showed the astounding scientific material he had gathered to his superiors, he claims it was not just confiscated, but destroyed. Certain UFO researchers opine that amateur American astronomer Stephen Slayton was the first to observe the mysterious object way back in 1958. While observing the moon with a 20-inch telescope, Slayton is said to have witnessed a dark spherical object moving at high speed on an unusual elliptical trajectory before disappearing when it reached the edge of the lunar disk. Based on these characteristics, he concluded it was artificial. But the U.S. military dismissed Slayton's sighting as a meteorite flying near the moon, as the object had not been recorded by any radar station. According to researchers, there are two possible origins of the name Black Knight. The first one maintains that it was derived from a 1972 science fiction novel, The Destruction of Fiena, by Soviet author Alexander Kazantsev. In the story, a civilization from the planet Phaeton that was destroyed in a nuclear disaster had launched the Black Prince satellite into Earth's orbit to communicate with Earthlings. When Kazantsev's novel was translated into English, the phrase Black Prince was changed to Black Knight. It is believed that this fictitious satellite lent its name to the space object discovered by Slayton. The second option is connected to United Kingdom's research ballistic missile called the Black Knight that was launched at Woomera, Australia on September 7, 1958. Whatever the origin of the mysterious satellite's moniker, it has stuck like glue.